Hello everybody, my name is Jean-Philippe Freire. I am one of the organizers of this workshop and I will be presenting uh, a starter topic uh, for the beginning of these proceedings. Um, I will be talking about forestry robotics and the question that I will be posing to you is is this the right bet at the right time? I am with the Institute of Systems and Robotics from the University of Queen Portugal and also a senior lecturer at Nottingham Trent University or NTU in the UK. So what is forestry in fact? Uh, we can call it the practice of creating, managing, using, conserving and repairing forests, woodlands and associated resources. Uh, but what is this more specifically? So, first of all, the core industry in forestry is called silviculture. Uh, it, it concerns the growing and cultivation of trees to provide timber and fuel wood as primary products and also many secondary commodities. Uh, and this uh, would include wildlife habitats, recreation and tourism, uh, water quality and landscape and community protection. Now, forestry also um, implies many subsidiary industries with uh, high added value, and these include apiculture, uh, forest farming, uh, that would include the uh, growth of uh, non timber forest products or NTFP, and this would uh, comprise decorative ferns, uh, speciality mushrooms, strawberry trees and many other products. So as you can see it's not only the uh, primary industry here, you also have many other satellite industries around uh, this practice. So this means that forestry has indeed a substantial weight in world economy. It creates many jobs and wealth, so this is recognized across the world as uh, uh, something uh, that makes um, forestry uh, a very important practice. Forestry also plays a crucial role in carbon sequestration. This means that forestry is part of what is called the carbon cycle. So it uh, removes from the air the polluting carbon that is uh, transferred uh, uh, into the atmosphere by many polluting industries. So you can see where uh, uh, forestry is really important uh, for humankind. However, for all of its potential, traditional forestry, so forestry in the traditional sense, is still a uh, risky investment with very slow returns. And this is because wood is a natural resource in the wild, which takes a long period of time to renew itself. Uh, and this period ranges from 12 to even over 100 years in some cases. Um, so uh, this is actually too long in terms of modern economies investment cycles. As a result, most companies and private owners actually convert uh, forests in their natural form into grazing lands or uh, industrial plantations involving single tree species that yield a higher rate of return on invested capital. Now, this could be, uh, for example, acacia magnum, uh, oil palm, pine tree or even eucalyptus. And in fact, in countries with lower um, uh, GDPs per capita, uh, this is the only realistic option left for private owners. As a consequence, unfortunately, forestry is uh, many times seen more as a strategic commitment for the future by governments instead of an investment in the present. Now, this leads to uh, an increasing lack of manpower due to low salaries and you have to take into account the harshness of forestry operations and how hazardous this, uh, these might be and also the progressive abandonment of rural areas and of practices such as pastoralism. 
Another thing that uh, comes into play in terms of forestry is that uh, um, we are uh, seeing an increasing amount of wildfires around the world. Specifically in Europe, the uh, European Commission says uh, or reports that Europe is affected by uh, about 65,000 forest uh, fires per year. More than 85% of this burnt area in Europe is in uh, the Mediterranean countries and uh, over the past 25 years this has been reflected in numbers such as in Greece having 1,500 fires per year in, on average, uh, Italy having 9,000 fires uh, per year, Spain 15,000 fires per year and Portugal, the worst offender of this group, 18,000 fires per year. As a matter of fact, in uh, 2017, Portugal was one of the most devastated regions worldwide. It, uh, there were uh, 500,000 hectares, so this is nearly uh, 1.5 million acres of burnt area, over 100 fatal casualties, and um, this has meant uh, a great deal in terms of uh, the forestry practice in Portugal and all of these countries uh, uh, because wildfires lead to the lack of forest regeneration capacity and therefore to uh, a negative effect of, on the environment which is impossible to measure and this all leads to a vicious circle of rural abandonment. So what is the way forward I ask? Um, and in the context of this workshop in particular, I would argue that it would be something in the lines of what we could call Forestry 4.0. This would include automation and the Internet of Things for Forestry. And also autonomous systems, which is the focus of the workshop. Uh, and um, uh, automation has slowly but steadily been introduced for decades now. Um, the Internet of Things for forestry in particular is a relatively recent trend, very similar to the Internet of Things for agriculture, but with particular focus on environmental control and early warning on wildfires. Autonomous systems, robotics, however, have been much more challenging, even though we, as I said, have some decades already uh, in advance of, of work on this because the environment is much more unstructured than in agriculture. So uh, even when forests are actually a result of plantation, tree lines are the only structured entity, the rest being uh, completely uh, um, hazardous in terms of placing. Um, uh, natural obstacles are generally left in place. Wildlife is not only an unpredictable obstacle, it has to be protected. So. Uh, uh, all of this should be taken into account. Also, we have rough terrain traversability, uh, for example, steep slopes. Uh, and um, uh, to do actually autonomous systems, you have to have reasoning and planning under a high level of uncertainty, which is something that is still very much uh, a work in progress. But most importantly, um, forestry imposes extremely ch challenging conditions for perception. So talking specifically about challenges of sensing for forestry robotics, you have dense homogeneity of the environment because you have all uh, this, this dense uh, uh, vegetation with trees and, and, uh, and other types of uh, um, plants all around. You have issues such as lens flare and overexposure um, due to the sun coming through the uh, canopies of trees. Uh, you have uh, issues such, such as fog and rain and also uh, wind, which uh, makes for a lot of motion uh, in all the surroundings and that, for example, kind of beats any uh, type of um, uh, motion detection system. For example, so everything is in in motion. In fact, in those cases, however, it's not only a question of challenges to sensing. It's also a question of challenges in terms of uh, algorithms. So, for example, there are still many robustness gaps 
uh, in core techniques such as holistic passing for forest scene analysis uh, where no um, generalizable solution has yet been uh, found uh, for segmentation classification of uh, for example the object of the forestry task or any distractors or secondary or ancillary entities to the task. Also another issue is visual odometry and SLAM in forest environments which is particularly difficult due to the difficulty in uh, for example uh, tracking uh, down uh, landmarks. And finally if um, swarm robotics or uh, teams of robots seems to be a good idea to be used in a uh, forestry um, application uh, there is still the challenge of cooperative perception which is uh, the, the research on this matter is still very in its infancy. The overall consequence is that robotics for forestry is still extremely challenging. That means both that it is an exciting new field, which is great because that means that we can come to this uh, workshop and show our latest results on our work in the field. Uh, but it is also outside the comfort zone in robotics. So there are very few uh, research groups working in the area. Now I'd like to turn your attention specifically to two uh, projects that I'm um, co contributing for. Uh, one is safety exploration and maintenance of forests with the integration of ecological robotics. Uh, in short, the Same Fire project and also the core project, Center of Operations for Rethinking Engineering. Same Fire has the um, main aim of uh, attaining forest landscape maintenance for fire prevention using a robotic team composed of a ranger and uh, uh, several scouts. Uh, and um, Mikhail Kulseir later on will be uh, talking in more detail about this subject, but I would like to give you a small introduction to uh, the project so that you may understand uh, some of the points that I'm trying to make uh, concerning the main question that I asked at the beginning of the presentation. So the uh, aim, as I explained, is uh, to um, promote fire prevention using a robotic team to cut down and mulch flammable material, uh, mainly live material, and that would include brushwood, bushes and shrubbery, or uh, herbaceous plants, 
or small arboreal vegetation and also in some cases flammable debris although as I said we will be mainly focusing on live material. So taking into consideration projects such as Samefire or any other project relating to forestry robotics, what do you think? Is this the right bet at the right time, as I asked in the beginning? I really hope that this workshop will help answering this question uh, through uh, lively discussions on uh, what I hope will be uh, exciting presentations of ongoing work in the area because I feel that this is really a tipping point uh, in terms of forestry robotics. In fact I would go as far as to say that we want you not only to help us answering the question as I said but also uh, to join us in this adventure which I think will be uh, really enthralling and uh, will uh, bring a lot of new things, good things, to robotics in general. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the rest of the workshop.